Thanks for stopping back out at the ranch. I'm Marie and this is Red Heart Quilts. Today I want to show you how to sash a quilt. But before I show you, I have a question. Why do you want to sash a quilt? The quilt behind me is called Square Diamonds. We sash this. See, this is the sashing. It's like a window sashing. It goes around the blocks. I sash this quilt because without the sashing, the blocks got a little confused. The beauty of these blocks, I wanted isolated, and with the sashing, it individualized each block. So sashing was very important on this quilt. That's why I sashed it. If you're not sure, take your blocks, put them on top of a piece of fabric that you think you might want to use for sashing, um, and see how it looks. The blocks will tell you if they want to be sashed or not. Once you decide that you want to sash it, um, then, I, then that's what I'm going to show you is how. Another reason you might want to sash your blocks is because you can add size to your quilt top. Um, if you put two inch sashing in between and you have ten blocks, that's really going to add a lot to your quilt top size. So there's a few different reasons you might want to sash a quilt. Now let's look at how we're going to sash a quilt. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's very doable. This is my quilt blocks. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare my blocks and then I'm going to press my blocks and square my blocks. So I'm going to be starting my quilt top with all my blocks identically the same size. Let's say 10 inches. I am going to then put sashing between each block. This is going to be my row. You'll notice I have four blocks in a row, but I'm only going to put three pieces of sashing in there. So because we just squared up our quilt block, and we know, remember we said we're going to make them 10 inches. These aren't 10, these are probably about 6. Um, we're going to cut some strips of sashing, whatever width you want. And again, you can decide the width that you want by laying your blocks on top of the fabric before you even cut it. This one, we cut one and a half and we ended up with one inch strips. We have some that we cut one inch and end up with a half inch. You can cut two and a half inches. You're always going to lose a quarter of an inch on each seam. That would end up two. So you decide what size. Then we're going to cut our strips the size of our block, the length of our block. If our block is 10 inches and we have 30 blocks, we're going to cut 30 10 inch pieces. We know that this is 10 inches, so we know if our 10 inch strip is going to fit there, it's going to be accurate. It's going to keep it very square. This is the way I sew a strip. I pin both ends and then I pin across here. I don't want it to move. I want it to end up exactly the width of my block. I, I don't know why, but I always put two pins at the end because for some reason, when I'm sewing, it tries to slip a little bit, and the nature of a sewing machine is to press that top layer. If you are not using an, a walking foot or, um, you know, the, you're just using a regular foot, it's just going to stand still, and the feed dogs pull that fabric through. So because this top presser foot is still, and you're dragging that fabric through, it's going to tend to stretch the top layer. If you have an even feed foot or a walking foot, it's always best, but a lot of people can't use those. A lot of people don't have those for their machines. It's not necessary. It's just like a little added plus. And a lot of times you think you only use those if you're sewing batting and a lot of thicknesses, but you can sew them at any time. But because I tend to get that little bit of drag on my top layer, I always seem to pin two pins at the end. I start sewing here, I come down, and I sew with a small stitch. I sew with about a two. My sewing machine defaults to two and a half. Every time I turn it on, it goes to two and a half. I turn it to two. If I have to unsew something, I'm usually not real happy about it because that's a very close stitch, but my stitches don't come apart and my edges of my blocks don't come apart. I don't usually have to tack it at the beginning and the end because my stitch is small. 
So that's just me. You can sew with any stitch you want. Make sure if you're sewing with a light and dark fabric that you use the darker of the threads. I'm a long armor and sometimes I have quilts come in and it'll be a black and a gray or a black and white and I see white threads on those blacks. It's not nearly as obvious to see a dark thread on a light color as it is to see a light thread on a dark color. Please try to match your threads to your darker colors. A dark gray is a standard thread that I use most of the time unless I'm using a definite dark or a definite light. And that's just my rule of thumb. That's just because I don't want 20,000 different colors of threads. I just have a few. So we're going to have our block. We're going to sew across the top. We're going to take our pins out. See what a tiny little stitch. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a tiny little stitch. Then we're going to press it. We're not going to iron this because if we ironed it, which if we iron, we iron like this. That's how we iron blue jeans. That's not how we iron. We do not iron a quilt block. We press a quilt block. We're nice to our quilt. We just press it just like that. Um, that set our seam. Then we take this. This iron is not on, so I'm having it on my mat. And we go just like this and open that seam. You'll notice because I wanted my seam to go towards the dark, I put my dark on the top when I start pressing it. It makes it a lot easier. I'm just going to finger press this in. See, now our block is straight at the sides. I did not have to trim this. I cut it the correct size. I pinned it on so it would not move. I stitched it on, and now my block is still straight. I've got another one we've already sewn and pressed. I'm going to sew it to this one. So this is, this is my first block, this way, right here. I sewed the sashing on. I have another block I sewed the sashing on, another block I sewed the sashing on. Notice I don't sew the sashing on the last block because that's going to have side sashing. So we're going to sew these two together. And I sew with the, the sashing on the top. I'm going to pin it just like we pinned the first piece. We're going to sew it just like we sewed the first piece. We're going to press it towards the dark. So our seams will be pressed both towards the dark. Once we get our rows done, no matter how many you're going to sew in your row, if you have two on a row, if you have four, if you have 12, it's still, once you sew all your row pieces together and have those pressed, we're ready to sew your rows together. Before we do that, we're going to take a measurement. Once we have this row pressed, any of the rows pressed, we're going to measure from this point to this point. So across our finished block from this point to this point. That's the measurement that we're going to cut our sashing to go between the blocks and the top and bottom. That's our next step. So we have one, two, three, four, five rows. We're going to cut six pieces of sashing that length. One on the top, two, three, four, five, one on the bottom. Once we have that cut accurately, we're going to pin and press just like we did to here to one of the rows. See? Stitch it on, press it towards the um, sashing. Now we're going to sew two of these rows together. This is where the tricky part comes in. I don't want to say difficult part because it's not a difficult thing to sew two rows together. It's a tricky part because we want to make sure our sashing is lined up. This block needs to be lined up to that block. This needs to be lined straight all the way down our block. If it's not, it's going to be very obvious. Sometimes, and remember the nature of our presser foot is to slip that fabric a little bit. Sometimes it will want to move after you have it pinned together. The way I try to do that, and I have to be honest, when I was doing my sample, I took one, one intersection apart three times. It did not want to go together right. But I finally got it. I pin my blocks just like this. I start by pinning them this way. Um, and then I open it up. 
and I make sure this sashing is straight across from this sashing and I pin it and I leave those pins in there all the way across no matter how many intersections I have then I take them and I have two pins front and back I pin it to death then you can pin all through here too I haven't but you would you always it doesn't hurt the more pins the better it's going to stay where you want it to stay I pin these so I don't have to take my pin out because people that know me know I don't want to take my pins out while I'm sewing. Of course I will take these out because you never want to sew over a pin. It will break your needle. It will dull your needle and you'll keep on sewing if it doesn't break it. Or it could even throw your whole tension off your sewing machine and you got a $150 sewing machine bill. You don't want that. It's much easier just to not ever sew over a pin. If there's a situation where I have to sew over a pin, I am going to walk it over with my little wheel on the side of my sewing machine. Um, so once we get this pinned, we're going to sew it. Again, we use our small stitch. Again, we're going to, of course, use our dark thread. We're going to open it up. And we're going to have our sashing. All of our rows now. These are our blocks. These are our rows. They have sashing in between. The last step is to sew our sashing on the two sides. In order to do that, we have sewn our sashing, we have pressed our sashing, we have made our rows, we have sewn our sashing between our rows, we have pressed that, now we're gonna measure from this point to this point. Notice I measure in the middle. Um, the sides can be a little bit stretchy because the nature of fabric is that it has a little bit of give in it. So I always sew, I always measure down the center of whatever I'm sewing something to. Um, this now has still stayed very square because we have had a square block that we started with. We measured our block and we cut our sashing so that stayed square. Then we sewed our rows together, we cut our sashing, that stayed square. We pinned it so we have a square quilt now. We measure this and we cut two pieces. One for this side, one for this side. I'm going to sew it on just like we did the other one. I sewed this in a light thread so you could see it. You're going to press it towards the sashing. And our sashing is going to be done. This one you can trim. I did not trim this one. I didn't cut it. I didn't measure and cut it. I just sewed it on there, which you're not supposed to do. Um, so after you have that pressed, this sashing can become your first border if you want to. It was our first border here, our sashing first border, same thing. You could also add another border and that's your first border and then your second border, third, fourth, fifth border. Um, but in our quilt, this is just our sashing. This is how you do it. Good luck with your intersections. Pin it as much as you have to. Um, I hope this has helped you if you're going to try to sash a quilt. Don't feel bad if you have to take an intersection apart a couple times. I find that it's easier to take a big section apart and refit that in rather than just taking the little tiny section. Um, like I said, I took the one of these came apart three times. It was not behaving. So if it did get to it did, did get together, okay. Um, it might not be absolutely perfect when you sew your sashing the first few times, but do the best you can. You've worked very hard for your blocks, and you also want to have a beautiful finished product. I hope this has helped you with your sashing. Thank you for stopping in at the ranch. If you have a question, you can email me. My email information is on the website. And until I see you again, see you back at the ranch. Thank you. Bye.